Uh, and now uh, I ask if uh, Shanae Dor Dor Knapp is there for the next, uh, I don't know, sorry for the pronunciation. It's okay. <laughs> it's Shane Borg. Um, it's a difficult name. I understand. Can you hear me? Okay. You have, as you know, 15 yes. minutes. Yes. Thank you. You can hear me, right? Yes. Oh, perfect. Okay. Then I will start and start and share my screen. Um, can you see my screen? Yes. Perfect. Okay, first of all, thank you for the opportunity and having me here um, at the um, BICA 21 conference. Um, I'm Shane Dorenkamp and I'm going to present our paper, a controlled adaptive network model of a virtual coach supporting speaking up behavior by healthcare professionals to optimize patient safety, mindful. Uh, first of all, I want to talk about the contents. I want to first briefly introduce um, speaking up behavior in hospitals, therefore also a short background on speaking up behavior in general. Um, afterwards, um, we designed a model um, based on literature that we com compiled. Um, and at that point during the description, I will also explain how the model works. And based on this model, we created or executed um, simulations on situation that may happen in um, in hospital, and specifically um, in the situation um, the delivery department of babies. Um, and then I'm going to discuss our discussion and the conclusions that we found. So first of all, about speaking up in hospitals, um, as you may know, a medical error during um, an operation is very detrimental to patient safety, could lead to um, death as well. And not speaking up about seen errors or reported errors um, is also very detrimental. Um, so speaking up behavior can um, function as some sort of safety behavior, uh, which addresses concerns with the benefit of patient safety and optimization of care. Um, however, even though speaking up behavior is a very relevant and important behavior um, in hospitals or even high-risk organizations themselves. Um, in a recent or in a in few reports, it has been found that it's very difficult to speak up in practice as 58% of nurses do not feel safe enough to speak up, um, indicating a hesitancy to speak up. Therefore, our paper aimed to outline these existing sources of um, the occurrence of speaking up behavior in risk um, organizations or high risk organizations such as in hospital um, using a computational modeling approach um, which is capable of uh, representing this behavior um, in a generative and causal manner um, and we also introduce a virtual coach as some type of mechanism to control um, further prevention of medical errors when for example in 42 percent of the cases people do not speak up so I'm going to talk about um, the overall model structure. So um, the adaptive causal network modeling, we designed this entire model. It's rather big, but also very interconnected. So I'm going to show you the entire model first before I go in detail for each section. So what I have here is the world state model, uh, which is indicated by the um, squares. And um, this is basically um, what is happening in the world, all the actions that are actually happening in a row. Next, we have an individual model of the, the nurse, uh, their mental state, where the speaking up is chosen, basically, um, as well as the doctor in the situation. You have a nurse and a doctor. In this case, we have a nurse and a doctor, and the doctor can respond to speaking up, um, um, a speaking up that is like um, in, in the air or is, has happened. So we also have that model, as well as the coach we introduced. Um, yes, so first I'm going to talk about the um, world state model, which basically is a sequence of, of actions that are 
generative based on this case description. We um, have a very brief description of the case description, which is when a baby is born, but is not breathing very well. So um, there's an intervention called, which then leads to subsequent actions allocated to specific roles of the nurse and the doctor. Um, the moment at we, W6, where the in, um, intervention seems to be insufficient, so the baby is still not breathing. Um, in this situation, we assume the nurse um, notices a type of error, which then at that point, and I will show you in the nurse model how that works, um, the nurse can choose to speak up or not speak up, which you can see here. So either the nurse speaks up, they stay silent, and when the nurse does speak up, um, it warrants or it warrants a type of reaction from the doctor um, based on the literature we found. It can be positive or negative. And if they do not speak up, we have this intervention by the coach that we introduced, um, where the coach can um, perform some type of intervention or speak up themselves to prevent the error from happening again, therefore, quote unquote, saving the baby and improving patient safety. An important note is that once um, the vent or the error is found, it also increases the risk of the baby's harm. Next, about the nurse individual model. So what we have here is in the orange box, we have the nurse's individual model. Um, it is a mental model that uses cognitive processes to get to a type of, um, yeah, to a type of behavior, which in this case is speaking up behavior. First of all, um, as you can see in like the previous big um, mental model or entire model, you saw a connection between the nurse individual model and the world state, which is basically modeling observation. The nurse is seeing what's happening in the world and they respond to that, as well as um, thinking about what their next step is, which is this sequence that you can see over here. For example, the nurse prepping um, the patient. The moment, however, where the nurse notices that there's an error, which is at N5, it activates the second part of, or it activates the speaking up um, system that we created, which is an evaluative decision-making system, um, which consists of three parts. The first part is once the nurse notices the error, um, it activates two evaluation states, uh, which is they evaluate whether they should speak up or whether they should not speak up or stay silent in this case. And as you can see, there's a loop in here. Um, there's For both evaluation states, there's a loop uh, of stimulus representation. And in that state, it basically the nurse basically asks themselves, what will happen if I speak up? So the stimulus representation states further activate the evaluation states, which means that either one choice or either evaluation state will be chosen to then um, choose speaking up or stay silent. And in an important to note in the literature, we found that an important mediator of speaking up is um, psychological safety, um, which entails um, feeling safe enough to speak up, which can be influenced by individual factors, which we have noted here are um, skills, experience, and training, um, as well as fear for repercussion. If there's a lot of fear, there's a lower chance or there's a lower psychological safety. Also important to note all the orange arrows are negative directions, are negative uh, relationships. So fear um, suppresses psychological safety. As well, psychological safety can also be influenced by um, higher um, or by organizational um, factors, such as organizational psychological safety and for example, the team and how much they trust themselves, as you can see here, team psychological safety and the organization, which also feeds into their own perspective of safety. Um, so let's say if there's a high psychological safety, then the nurse will choose psychological safety. At this point, it activates the preparation state um, evaluation system, where um, the nurse prepares to actually do the action of speaking up which can also at that point be influenced by, let's say, stress. And we have here a control state 
um, which lightly suppresses the action of speaking up or silence um, because it should mimic or model hesitancy as well as um, harm or the perceived patient harm, how harm is the baby should also influence whether they should speak up or not. Um, so we have either speak up or not speak up based on this system. Um, yes. So that is shown here. They can show either speaking up or not speak up. The next is the doctor in the visual model. And we attempted to model this because um, the response to speaking up can also affect um, future behavior of speaking up or the fear of speaking up. And I will show you that in a second. Even though there's less um, literature on this, it's still important to have a foundation of how um, can we respond to this. So at this point, the doctor sees or observes that the nurse has spoken up. At that point, this is the same system of the observation system as well as what action am I gonna take next? Um, so once the doctor notices that the nurse has spoken up, it activates some type of um, receptivity system. How receptive am I towards reacting positively towards speaking up? So that's this D12 over here, which can be influenced by the amount of stress the doctor has and the fatigue, as we have found. If there's a high amount of stress and high amount of fatigue, it will repress or decrease the chances of the nurse being able to, um, or the doctor um, receiving the speaking up behavior positively. Um, and then it actually activates a similar system as I described before. So it's the same evaluative position system with a um, stimulus response loop um, and evaluation loop and preparation loop. So either a positive response will um, turn out of this or a negative response. And if the doctor has responded, it's either positive or negative. Yeah. And this is the introduced coach that we have, which is an almost identical copy of the nurse, but has the values of the nurse when they always speak up or always choose to speak up. There's always, a, for example, a high psychological safety um, in this, in, in this um, coach. The only difference is what is important is that it should not activate um, before the nurse has spoken up. So the, when a nurse does speak up, um, this coach can, for example, get some information from the context. Um, it should be repressed over here. This is our context or control state. Um, this threshold of the state is so high that if there is a, um, if the nurse speaks up, it should not activate this um, state to then further um, allow the coach to intervene in the situation, which can be shown over here. Um, so as you can see, there's, for example, silence has a positive response or positive connection with the choice to speak up of the coach as we introduce so high for example the nurse does not speak up after a long time after the error has been um, noticed also by the, the coach um, then it should activate um, this state this control state enough to further activate um, the intervention of the coach and in the same manner when the nurse does speak up it should repress um, this state of the coach. So there's not enough activation to do the intervention. Okay, this is the entire model. Um, so what we have done, we took a case analysis or a case study by, um, um, provided by, the, by a neonatologist, where after the delivery in the end, it's not transitioning well. Um, as you can read here, the baby is blue and um, even after stimulating, it's still not responding. So they perform a ventilation or a mechanical ventilation. Um, however, this ventilation is not boning well on the baby. Therefore, um, even though, because the baby is not stabilized by the use of the intervention, there is still no chest movements. And at that point, um, as you can read here, the nurse notices what the error is. And at that point, um, 
they can they can give a suggestion to the doctor, but then they first have to decide whether they will speak up or not speak up. Speak up. So we did some um, simulation experiments. We have a baseline simulation here, which shows that um, there is no activation of W um, S six, which is the um, is an insufficiency of the um, inter intervention because intervention was successful. Therefore, um, there was no need to activate for the nurse to speak up or even the coach to speak up. As you can see, there's no activation of either of those states. Next um, um, simulation we did was uh, speaking up with uh, the doctor's positive response. So first I'll show you the um, graph that we had um, with some um, illustration of the loops that I talked about. This basically shows how um, one evaluation state was chosen. So in this case, the N10 the evaluation of speaking up was chosen and um, the silence was further repressed because it could not be chosen. Oh. Um, and these are the preparation states that activate um, after the choice was made, basically, um, which then triggers um, activation of speaking up by the nurse. The second graph shows you also the nurse speaking up, as well as I did not <laughs> talk about this before, but there's also some type of stress um, always uh, assumed when you have to make a decision, especially a decision such as this, this with such a risk. Um, and as you can see, the, the what's happening, that um, the stress lowers after uh, the nurse speaks up. Um, and here is the prevention of medical error, um, which is an action taken when the nurse speaks up about um, the error, as well as the increase of patient safety at this point. Um, and here you see the doctor's response after um, um, activation of the speaking up behavior by the nurse. Um, and here you see the high receptivity to the speaking up behavior um, that we modeled before. So there is a lower amount of stress and lower amount of fatigue, basically, which triggers then the positive response by the doctor. Um, and an important factor was, as um, I stated, is um, fear for repercussions, so negative consequences on, for example, speaking up. Um, fear lowers. As you can see here, it's this graph, lowers um, the moment the doctor has a positive response to their suggestion. So we can, uh, even though this is a, a singular event, it's an assumption that next time there will probably be less fear to speak up in the future, which leads to higher psychological safety. Okay. And here we had these um, states for psychological safety which are rather high and or, um, which allow speaking up to happen. Um, the next simulation we did was um, speaking up with a negative response. As you Sorry, can see we here. are running out of the time. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Um, should I just quit or go to the discussion? Um, so there's a negative response, as you can see, with low receptivity, high stress, etc. Uh, as well as decision stress and increased fear, um, and also lower amounts of um, psychological safety at the end. And here is silence, um, quite simple to see. Lots of fear, organizational, it's all very low, which allows the nurse to not speak up. And this shows the intervention of the coach, uh, which should lower uh, fear in the future. Um, even though the nurse did not speak up because of the low amounts of psychological safety. But patient safety increases, which is an important aspect of this paper. Um, the conclusion is, is that this paper um, demonstrates how speaking up behavior uh, can occur in healthcare professionals, but we have some um, limitations as the study was based on literature mostly. So we want to validate with data and we could like use more um, factors that influence psychological safety, um, such as you can read here, leadership hierarchy, et cetera. 
um, and now we only measured a singular event. Um, but it does provide a good baseline for um, future models of speaking up behavior, as important as it is in hospital settings. Thank you for your listening. Do you have any questions? Yes, someone. Questions? Yes, sir. Hi, it's indeed a simple question. I noticed that in your model, you have squares and you have circles. What is the difference between yes. that? So the squares, um, I have a lot of things here. The squares basically indicate um, the real state model, which um, show these are the actions that are actually happening in the world, as you can see. They're only based on, um, so for example, you speak up and that is actually happening in the world. The round, um, states that I have are mental states. So that's only happening within the nurse, um, in the context, or um, within the doctor. So it's a kind of a, a premise that is happening. You, you don't have a way yes. of controlling them. You don't have a way of? It's just a premise that you have on, on them. You, you, don't, uh, you, you cannot uh, uh, observe it happening because it's inside the, the, the mind of, of the person. It's indeed in the mind of the person. That's why these assumptions were made based on the literature that we can be found. And I think, um, as you say, yes, it's a premise. Um, so therefore, you could we could be able to validate the um, validation or the accuracy of these um, states with further, let's say, questionnaires to better predict um, what are speaking up can happen, for example. But both yes. of them are events. Uh, both the squares and the circles are events. Mm -hmm. The difference is that the, the, the squares are observable and the, the circles are inside the mind of, of someone. Yes, yes, so, basically. Okay, yeah. someone else? Questions? Okay, thank you for your presentation was great, it's very interesting. Okay. okay.